Okay, hi everyone. Good morning from Good morning. sunny Vienna. Uh, this is the University of Vienna. This is where Monica's and mine offices are. Uh, so at least this way you get to see uh, uh, and vi come come visit us at uh, at our lovely uh, historical university building. Uh, so my name is Teresa Kalova. I'm the data stewardship coordinator at the University of Vienna. And joining me is uh, my colleague, Monica Bagman. Monica? Um, I'm Monica. I'm uh, one of the data stewards. Uh, and I'm also one of the students in this certificate course. So this is my role today. Thank you. Uh, so as Monica was mentioning, she is taking uh, this course currently, and uh, I am the um, scientific coordinator of the course. So today we will let you know a little bit about um, how we went about developing, designing the curriculum, developing the certificate course, and uh, also a little bit about how it's going currently. And uh, Monica will let you know uh, a little bit about her experience from the point of view of a uh, of the course participant. And we will give you a, a few um, tips or food for thought when you're thinking about perhaps developing a similar program uh, at your own institution. So let's jump right in. Um, why do we need a course? specifically for data stewards. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this quote by Baron Mons, that we will need to educate around 500,000 data stewards in the EU alone to support researchers with various data stewardship, research data management tasks, as these are deemed too complex and time consuming to leave to researchers. So we're trying to professionalize the tasks of data stewardship and, and make this into um, an individual role with the recognition that it deserves. So the first question we asked ourselves when developing this course was, um, what are the typical tasks of data stewards? What do um, people who are currently in data stewardship roles um, typically take on. And in order to find out more about that, we've conducted interviews with data stewards from various countries. We also analyzed job listings, job descriptions, and we came up with these five main areas of uh, data stewardship tasks. So um, on the one hand, in the, in the right-hand um, uh, corner, we have the, um, uh, the advising, the support of researchers, helping them setting up sustainable RDM workflows and helping them uh, drafting, for example, data management plans. Um, so that's kind of one of the major, major areas. Then we have, uh, when we move down, we have the requirements engineering and generally the topic of needs assessment because we're trying to support researchers um, the way they need uh, to be supported. So for that, we obviously need to um, look into the needs they have in terms of research data management. And that in the bottom, we have the uh, image of a bridge. Uh, so that's kind of uh, the, the image that comes to mind very often when speaking about data stewardship. And it just symbolizes connecting researchers on the one hand with research infrastructure or services that are located at centralized, um, on the central level at a research institution and just building that sort of bridge and having that bridging function. And uh, then we also have the uh, area of doing training. So very often data stewards would offer training on open science, on research data management practices to researchers and students. And then the last image is uh, to symbolize um, networking, being involved in various national international initiatives uh, and working groups. So these are the kind of the five main areas that data stewards that are currently active uh, typically take on. So from that, we moved to the question of what competencies do data stewards need in order to be successful in, in 
picking up those tasks. And uh, we have these kind of four areas, four major areas of competencies. Uh, professional um, competence is probably no surprises there. Data stewards need uh, quite a, a large, wide area of, of skills and knowledge in, uh, from many, many different areas. So we're obviously starting with research data management. We have open research, open knowledge topics. Um, data formats, file formats. They also need some uh, knowledge of data security, but also legal and ethical um, knowledge is really relevant to data stewardship practice. Um, and we move to the methodological competence. So this is uh, what I was already mentioning. Um, this, this sort of bridging function and the ability to translate the needs of researchers to research infrastructure and to policy. Um, and, but we also have uh, skills such as being able to give a good presentation or being good at conflict management. Um, and then we have these two areas, personal uh, and social competence. So in the er area of personal competence, um, we have quite an extensive list, as you can see. So uh, data stewards need to be quite results-oriented, curious, but also tolerant to practices in various disciplines. And the one that most data stewards always pick up on when I show this, uh, this graphic is uh, patience. And I'm sure that Monica would agree with me uh, that being patient is quite key uh, to being successful as a data steward. But generally the most, probably the most, most important um, and helpful competence uh, and skill a data steward can have is communication. So as we've seen a lot of the tasks and uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the activities that data stewards uh, take on uh, kind of focus around communication. So this is very much uh, key to uh, being successful in those data stewardship roles. So we haven't really looked at the topic of data stewardship training and education in isolation. Um, so within the University of Vienna, we uh, kind of took a more holistic approach to the topic and we um, decided to set up uh, a formal data stewardship program, which consists of two parts. Uh, on the one hand, we have the certificate course. Um, on the one hand, we have the certificate course, Data Steward, but we also started uh, our own Data Steward network, which is very similar to, um, to the ones that I'm sure many of you are familiar from the Netherlands, for example, uh, where we have um, one coordinator um, at the university library, and then we have um, embedded Data Stewards on the level of individual faculties. So in our case, we're currently running a um, pilot for um, for our data steward network with three embedded data stewards at two faculties and one research center. The University of Vienna is a very large research institution. We have 15 faculties and five large research centers that are considered on the same level as the faculties. So ideally we would have at least 20 data stewards, uh, but um, as we all know, it's not that easy to create new positions within, any, within a university. And we were very lucky to be able to um, convince our administration that they uh, fund this three-year pilot with three data stewards. And hopefully we will be able to get more data stewards in the future. But we didn't wanna just hire people to come and work as data stewards but we really wanted to you know, support them uh, in order to um, acquire all of these competencies that I was mentioning before within their first year on the job. And that was very much one of the main reasons why we um, developed this course. So let's chat about it. Um, we've designed the certificate course data steward around kind of three main guiding principles. So of course we have the competence acquisition on the one hand, uh, but we really wanted to support 
peer-to-peer -peer learning because this is a further education program. So mostly it's it's professionals joining us who have work experience. And this we want to we wanted to really honor that work experience that they have um, and the the skills and the knowledge that they've acquired through their previous training or or degree programs. Uh, and all of that was very much with the goal in mind to uh, develop a data storage community and have our emerging data storage become a part of both the data stewardship community in Austria, but also internationally and ideally globally. So a few of the basic facts about the certificate course. As I was mentioning, it is a part-time further education program, and it's in part based on a, a course called Data Librarian, which we used to offer uh, several years back. But this course was open, as the name suggests, to uh, librarians or information professionals only. So we very much wanted to expand on that target group because data stewardship is not only uh, being done by librarians. Uh, and what we also um, considered were, were the results of the Fair Data Austria project, which was a national funded project that ran for the past three years, that very much brought the topic of data stewardship to Austria. And that's where we, in that context, we created um, all of those tasks and the competencies that I was telling you before. And we also collaborated with similar further education uh, courses, such as uh, Data Train or the certificate course RDM, Certificatskurs FDM uh, from Germany. So once you've successfully finished the course, you receive an official certificate of the University of Vienna. The course is conducted in English and it takes two semesters. Uh, and that amounts to 15 credit points. So as to our target groups, we wanted to keep it as uh, broad as possible and just be very open to, um, to again, people from um, various paths of life and just approach this topic of um, admissions very holistically to conduct a holistic review. So we are uh, trying to target both active researchers, PhD students, postdocs, who kind of want to make a shift more, to, more towards uh, research data uh, support or just research support in general. But we are also trying to um, provide uh, an opportunity uh, to upskill current research support staff in order for them to take on this new role. And the course costs uh, 2,950 euros. So our main goal here is to prepare both existing and new hires uh, for the challenging new role of data storage. So let's have a quick look at our timeline. Um, we started in 2021, and that was very much part of this Fair Data Austria project where we developed uh, the uh, initial concept for the course and we developed the um, curriculum. And uh, we've conducted several feedback rounds with experts on, on research data management, data stewardship, uh, but also research data management training, education uh, in particular. And we've worked together very much with experts with, from the Fair Data Austria project. So it was uh, very much designed with um, the, within the, the framework of the project and uh, kind of looking at the uh, situation at Austrian research institutions. And this was invaluable in uh, further developing the curriculum and then also starting the formal accreditation process within the university. So in 2022, we were able to complete this accreditation process and to start setting up a marketing plan, PR plan, um, and to also open the online registration for the first round of the course. 
and kind of at the same time we were uh, contacting instructors lecturers from Austria and other mostly European countries and together with these experts we were detailing this basic curriculum and we were uh, kind of completing it in order to start the course uh, for the very first time in October uh, last year. So the way it, uh, the course is designed, it's set, uh, is split into five modules. All of them are obligatory. Um, so we start with the first module, which very much introduces the topic of RDM and open science to the participants. And uh, then we have the second module, which uh, covers the basics of IT applications and some data science, so data-driven research. Um, and as you see in the, um, in the picture on the right-hand side, these two modules very much build the basis of the course. So we kind of touch upon a lot of uh, different subjects that we really cover in detail uh, in the third module, which is called Fair Data and the Research Data Lifecycle. And um, then we move to the fourth module, which starts translating all of that knowledge that the participants have acquired throughout the first three modules into data stewardship practice. So it's a lot about developing RDM support services and um, and kind of basics of teaching and doing training, um, which will then uh, really be used within the fifth module, which is called Data Stewardship and Practice Project Work, where the participants complete either an individual or a group project. So I uh, added uh, some of the feedback we've received for the first module, which has been overwhelmingly positive and generally the feedback's been really, really good. And um, we're, we're really happy with where we're at uh, at this moment. Um, we're kind of um, in the middle of the third module or really towards the end of the third module currently. So um, we'll see how it goes, <laughs> but uh, so far so good. Uh, here are just a few um, details, a few of the topics that we're covering within the individual modules. And uh, now I will let Monica tell you a little bit about how it's going for her and what recommendations she has for you. So as we mentioned in the beginning, I'm talking as a participant in this course, as a student, and also as a, as a person who is now a data steward and also has been a data manager for five years before that. Um, the first point is language and internationality. Um, I especially enjoy the internationality of the course. Various countries have the same challenges and many initiatives in RDM are located on a European or even more international level anyway. So it's, yeah, this is a good um, viewpoint, I think. And having it in English is also a good training, even or may mainly maybe because it's not the first language of most of us. So, but we will have to talk in English in, in our jobs with researchers who are not, uh, can't speak the country's main language. So it's a good training. Then meeting in person. Doing the course online has advantages, not only in pandemic times. It makes attending for people from far away easier, however you define far away. It might be two cities um, away or five nations away. I'm especially thinking of those people that pay for the course themselves. We have some of them um, and it it's, uh, would cost a lot more if they had to come for every module and stay here and so on. And also for people who don't like speaking up in a large group, it might be easier to add or ask something in the chat, for example. But I think meeting in person at some point in the course is central for establishing a community because we, Terry's already mentioned the peer learning. So for this sense of community, it's I think ideal to meet 
at some point in the course. In our case, the first module it, which, uh, the, is a whole week, uh, and this was in person. An idea from another course I attend is making a personal introduction videos, only two or three minutes, just what you do professionally and also something personal. So not only the participants can get an impression of the other people beforehand, but also the lecturers can watch the videos. And so we are spared round after round of introductions that everyone knows by heart already. Uh, the building upon pre prior knowledge is, um, uh, I think, an important thing to discuss um, because a colleague and I discussed if we should have some, uh, if people should have prior knowledge in data management, so you could already start at a maybe not higher but more practical level. And I also attended the predecessor course, the data librarian course, before a few uh, years ago. And here, a deeper training in library science, or at least experience in library work, was a prerequisite. And this has advantages. But in the ongoing Data Steward course, we come from various backgrounds. So there are researchers, IT staff, technicians, librarians, people already working in research data management, or even being data stewards already. And I think we should value their individual experiences and knowledge, and that the group benefits from the variety. One example, especially as a data stewardess, I benefit from the questions the researchers in the group ask, because these are the questions that also my researchers will ask. So this is the, I really like to see their point of view. So building upon prior knowledge, yes, but not building upon prior data management knowledge. Maybe you could send out some introduction and literature uh, to read beforehand, but I wouldn't make it a prerequisite to be already uh, at, in data management. So as I mentioned, the first week took place in presence. Um, and on the first day, we came into the room and had seats assigned. And this was a bit strange because, you know, everyone wants to sit in the back. <laughs> uh, and then we discovered we were already assigned to body groups of five people and these groups were not randomly uh, put together but they were chosen carefully so it's and it really worked great so we have my group for example we have two researchers from different areas um, my background is librarian there's another librarian but at the medical university so in another field of studies and also um artist and IT technician, or art researcher and IT technician. So it's a really good group. Um, and we identified quite fast also with the members and with, with our group. Uh, and some advantages I see. Um, people who might feel, some people might feel unwell in large groups of unknown people. And so they have this smaller group to start talking with. And also it's much faster if you need groups for some group work within the lectures because you already have your assigned group. So, and this group stays like that for the whole course. As I know, not from this course, but from other courses, uh, I have um, insight there might be conflicts in such a group. For example, misunderstandings or different working styles coming together. And so you should be prepared just in case to moderate some conflicts, especially if some working groups are, is crucial to complete the course. So if they have to work together. In our case, this, this body group, we can use it um, to exchange experience and so on. And we do some group work, but it's not uh, our last project, for example, uh, is, is an individual work and not a group work, but just to consider when you build some groups like that. Um, and the last point I want to make is that as a student, I like to have this international course, which might be supplemented by country or region specific add-ons. For example, expanding, expanding on EU legislation or national research funding structures is important but not necessarily interesting or useful for all in the group, depending on the, the country they're coming from. So this might be dealt with in kind of an add-on. So coming back to my first point, the internationality, I don't really think that every country needs their own complete course, 
but um, could offer some add-ons and other modules, for example. And so I, I invite you cordially to join our course and then design some country-specific plus things. <laughs> okay, Teresa. Thank you, Monica. So now that uh, we've heard uh, a few tips and suggestions from the point of view of Monica as the participant, as the student on the course. Um, I have a few things to add uh, from my perspective. So when you're designing a course for data stewards, um, it is a good idea to let the program reflect the global data steward community. It's trying to make it international, both in terms of the instructors, the teachers you invite to teach on the course, um, and, and try to think outside of the box. We all know the big names in the RDM community, but uh, there are a lot of experts out there who might not be as you know, visible uh, uh, as some, and they might have a lot to offer and they might really jump at the, the opportunity to be able you know, to share their, their experience and their knowledge with the new, new next generation of data stewards. Um, I really can recommend developing a holistic admissions process. So really try to think about um, the experience your participants have. You know, is this something that's going to benefit the group? This experience that they bring is it like unique and something that you know nobody else has? Um, because as Monica was mentioning, this has definitely been um, the most beneficial within our course, uh, both for, uh, you know, within the group of the participants, but also for us as instructors, as uh, trainers on the course, uh, we've been able to, to learn a lot from the participants as well, because they bring such diverse uh, perspectives. And I mean now um, both looking at, you know, various uh, research domains, but also um, trying to consider people who perhaps don't have that sort of formal education or don't have advanced degrees. Because yes, currently there are many data stewards who have a PhD, but there are so many more people who take on data stewardship roles or tasks of data stewards who perhaps have a high school diploma and they might have 10 years of experience in you know, supporting their department uh, as for example, with, with uh, software development. And they might not have a PhD in computer science, yet their experience would be invaluable within a course like this. So just really appreciating and trying to utilize, you know, the diverse perspectives the participants bring to the course. Um, and yeah, as Monica was mentioning, we uh, are happy to talk to you about possible collaborations uh, with our course, or else you can always just sign up and come to Vienna in October. The registration will open on April 17th, so very, very soon. And if you're interested, you can check out the website and sign up for one of our information events or just sign up for the newsletter. So we will let you know when the registration opens. But for now, we just want to thank you for listening and we're really excited to talk to you and answer all your questions. <laughs>